North Korean factories are working at full capacity to supply weapons to Russia. South Korean Defense Minister Shin Won-sik has said that North Korea's munitions factories are working at full capacity to supply weapons to Russia. South Korean Yonhap News Agency reported this. Certain factories in North Korea are operating at full capacity, primarily to produce weapons and shells for Russia. Shin Won-sik has said, in exchange for weapons, Russia sends North Korea much-needed food and other essential goods. Moscow has also likely provided Pyongyang with satellite technology as the country launched its first spy satellite in November and even promised to launch three more. This year, Shin Won-sik said. He added that North Korea has shipped about 6,700 containers thought to contain munitions to Russia since the September summit between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian President Vladimir Putin. This is enough to hold approximately 3,152mm artillery rounds or 500,122mm artillery rounds. Earlier, the media reported that the European Union proposed the imposition of sanctions on North Korea for providing Russia with missiles that it uses against Ukraine. In December 2023, the US side reported that it had confirmed reports that North Korea had delivered more than 1,000 containers of ammunition to Russia. We do not have new information that the North Korea recently delivered even more arms to Russia for use in their war against Ukraine and our information does not indicate that the North Korea has provided Russia with more than a thousand containers of military equipment and munitions, U.S. Ambassador to NATO Julianne Smith said. She also reported the availability of satellite images showing the movement of these containers from North Korea to Russia on cargo vessels. Russia is preparing to launch nuclear weapon into space, U.S. fears. Russia wants to put a nuclear weapon into space, U.S. intelligence indicates, in what was described as a serious national security threat, according to The Telegraph. It is noted that the weapons system could be used to target Western satellites in space, potentially knocking out communications and military targeting systems. The U.S. president is understood to have been tracking the threat, described as grave but not immediate, for some weeks, according to White House sources. Republican Mike Turner, the head of the House Intelligence Committee, revealed the existence of the intelligence in a public statement calling on Biden to share it with the public. Sources told ABC News that the intelligence had to do with Moscow seeking to put a nuclear weapon in space. The weapon would not be used against targets on the ground, the sources said, but described the intelligence as very concerning and very sensitive. It comes amid growing fears that Russia's war in Ukraine has escalated the potential for a clash between Moscow and NATO. White House officials said that they assessed the threat to be serious but believed there were ways to contain it without triggering mass panic. Malcolm Davis, a senior analyst at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, said if Russia has, in fact, deployed nuclear weapons in orbit, that would be a deliberate and direct violation of the 1967 Outer Space Treaty by Moscow. The Outer Space Treaty is a cornerstone of space stability and this would be a grave setback for international arms control, he told The Telegraph. German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock was tracked down by a Russian drone. The head of the German Foreign Ministry, Annalena Baerbock, had to cancel a meeting in the Nikolaev region because of a Russian reconnaissance unmanned aerial vehicle. Build reporter Nadja Aswad, who was present during this incident, writes about this. She says that she has been accompanying Baerbock on trips abroad for two years, but has never experienced such a moment. Alarm! Drones! The minister's convoy is in danger, the journalist recalls. So Baerbock interrupted the conversation with the head of the desalination plant in the Mykolaiv region because of a message from the embassy staff, after which everyone immediately got into the cars. We sit down and the convoy immediately moves off as one. Having entered a normal road, the convoy accelerates to 80 to 100 kilometers an hour. And then the journalists are informed, a Russian reconnaissance drone was spotted over the territory where we were driving. Usually such drones are followed by direct airstrikes, writes Aswad. Later, alarm programs went off on the delegation's smartphones. 
They were informed that a Russian drone was monitoring the convoy, so they must continue to move forward. We move on, and the fear of the invisible threat from the air travels with us. A few minutes later, everything is clear. The drone has turned off. She added,